Hey guys, what's up? It's Shelby and welcome back to my channel. So today is another um, Mystery Monday video. I have loved looking these up. I am so excited to continue these. I hope you guys are liking them as much as I am. But today we're going to be talking about the Jameson family and this is definitely interesting. It has more theories than actual evidence in like this whole case so it is it's definitely an interesting case so let's just go ahead and get into this video so the Jameson family consisted of Bobby who was 44 Sherilyn who was 40 and their daughter Madison who was six they lived in a town called Euphila Oklahoma Oklahoma I think that is how you say it. I'm not really good with pronunciations but um, they lived kind of in a sub suburban area you know they didn't really live like you know out in the middle of nowhere or anything um and they were definitely looking to move closer to like the wilderness to nature closer to you know the hills and you know a little bit out of the city so they had actually found a property in red oak um oklahoma which i think is about 15 20 minutes from where they already were on october 8th of 2009 they ended up going missing that day, they took their family dog, they took Madison and themselves, of course, and they took a whole bunch of stuff with them to go check out the property in Red Oak, um, Oklahoma, where they uh, had found the property that they wanted. Um, it, like I said, it was kind of this small town, and um, it was a lot of wilderness, a lot of area and nature and stuff like that. So they packed everybody into the car, and they started their drive. They ended up getting lost on this drive and they had stopped to ask somebody for directions and that was the last time that the Jamison family was seen. On October 16th, 2009, Bobby's truck was found parked by this like nature-y area. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you would call it, but it was like this road and on the sides were just like these forest areas. They ended up finding their family dog in this truck, I mean, just completely dehydrated and hungry. Probably hot because it is Oklahoma. Oklahoma is a warm state. This dog was near death and um, I actually found out because I wanted to make sure. I actually did find out that the dog did make it and is living with one of the um, parents of either Bobby or Sherilyn. I'm pretty sure it is Sherilyn, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but the dog is alive right now <laughs> also in this truck they found everything they found their coats their luggage their ids their wallets they found everything they found their gps in this car and they also found thirty two thousand dollars found under the driver's side seat um which was a little interesting and the car the truck was also unlocked which is kind of odd like if you have all this stuff in your car, why would you just leave it unlocked? I mean, they had everything, their wallets, their IDs, their driver's license. They had all that money in the under the seat. They had all of their coats and luggage and the dog and everything. And it was just an unlocked car. The deputies that were on the scene at the time figured that they had wandered off into these woods and got lost. So they did a big search and all the deputies came there and they all searched, um just around that area they didn't go very far they just kind of went as far as they think that the Jameson family could have gone but they didn't find anything the next day on October 17th they took um the two phones that they found um Bobby and Sherilyn's and they tracked their phones to see where they had gone in the from the 8th to when their truck was found so it pinged at this hill area and they had walked for about 15 minutes from their truck up this hill and then they took this picture of Madison a lot of people are skeptical of this picture because she's looks a little distressed she doesn't look very happy she looks like almost force posing um but I work with a lot of kids and I don't necessarily think it's too alarming because Kids get crabby, kids get hungry, kids don't really like 15 minute walks in the heat, you know what I mean? So she could have just been crabby and they wanted to just take a quick picture, maybe they were going to send it to their family or something to like show them, hey, we're here, you know what I mean? Like, 
you don't really know that she was in danger because like I said, she's six, you know what I mean? She could have been hungry or crabby, they could have been taking her like out to a picnic or something and maybe they were getting ready to eat, It was maybe it was lunchtime or something, you don't really know. She could have been tired from walking, tired from the heat or just tired in general and then walking. Kids aren't really the best when it comes to taking long walks, so... Um, I don't know, to me it's not too alarming or anything, especially because it was taken on the Jameson family's phone. I don't know. I don't know. It just, it doesn't really, like, concern me all that much. And then the last place that their phones pinged was their truck, where their truck was found, and that was the last place that it pinged. They conducted a massive search of these woods and around this area. I mean, they had canine units, they had drones, they had people on foot, people on horses, they had helicopters. I mean, they had everything to find the Jamison family, but they could not find anything. The canine unit actually um, alerted to this um, water tower in the area, um, so they drained the whole thing and they looked, but they didn't find anything at all. On November 15th, 2013, um, skeletal remains were found in this area. They were found laying side by side and they were all face down and some of the bones um, from these skeletons were missing. In 2014, these bones were confirmed to be the Jamison family. They could not find the cause of death because of it was pretty much, like I said, just skeletal remains. There wasn't much for like the um, for the autopsy to really do to find the cause of death. Um, so it was undetermined the cause of death. But like I said, there is so many theories to how they died. Um, there was a couple holes in the um bones and there was also a hole in Bobby's um head so that is really all they have for that case and um I'm gonna get into some theories now there is about five or six I think that I have found that I find the most probable or interesting for you guys because like I said there is so many to aliens and mafias and murders and murder suicides and like just there is so much speculation on how this happened but I just grabbed a couple that I think are like I said the most probable and like the most interesting that I find. So the first um theory that I have for you is the 35 degree latitude or line of tragedy. So on this line of the 35 degree latitude line there has been a lot of tragedy and there has been a lot of murders there has been a lot of just bad activity on this line of latitude this um woman named andrea pia kennedy um she had postpartum depression after she had her kids and she ended up taking them to this area that was on the 35 degree latitude line and she murdered all of them and there was five kids Pastor Carol Daniels was murdered in her church, again, on this line of latitude. Timothy McVeigh bombed the Alfred P. Manor Fed building and injured 700 people and killed 168. And the one that everybody is um, kind of basing this theory on is Timothy Raymond Estep, I think is how you say it. I'm not sure. I, read it, I wrote it down. But I didn't do a very good job at writing it down, so I don't know if that's how you say it or if that's even close to how you say it, but um, yeah. He visited there uh, around the, the 35 degree latitude line and he disappeared and has still never been found to this day. But like the Jamison family, his truck was found, but he was never found. That's really all there is to that theory because, you know, like I said, the line of tragedy or whatever you want to call it, the 35 degree line of latitude is this area of tragedy where people, you know, go missing, get murdered, like bombs, and you know what I mean? So it's just this area of tragedy and that is where they were found. So, you know, people think maybe something happened there that, you know, caused their death instead of just 
getting lost in the woods and dying of exposure type of thing. The next one I have is the Mexican Mafia. So Bobby's dad, Bob, those two were business partners for a while and then they decided to sell their business and Bobby was going to get half and Bob was going to get the other half, but when they sold their business, Bob refused to give Bobby his half of this deal. So Bobby ended up suing his father and that made his father like extremely enraged with him. He was threatening the Jamison family, threatening to kill them, threatening to attack them, all of this stuff. And Bobby's mom actually put a restraining order out on Bobby's father for, you know, this reason. And Bob is said to have ties with the Mexican Mafia, so they are thinking that he had somebody, like, he knew that they were going to this area and he had somebody, you know, go out and kill them or, you know, you know, you never, or he did it, but he does have a solid alibi because he was in the hospital while, um, they were out, but he was sick and he did end up dying two months after the these bodies were found, but that doesn't mean that he didn't, you know, set it up, tell somebody that had ties, like he had ties to Mexican Mafia, he could have told somebody that he knew from the Mafia to kill these people off for money, they never really looked into like his bank records or anything like that to see if he had like cashed out $1,500 or $500,000 or whatever, but um, that's really all there is to that theory. I think that is a pretty good theory because from what I have seen of Bob, he is very violent. I mean, Bobby's mom put a restraining order out on him and set up these cameras at their driveway to make sure that he wasn't coming around and everything. I mean, she was genuinely scared for um, Sherilyn, Bobby, and Madison, so it definitely is a good theory to, um, put it together, but again, these are theories, they are not confirmed at all. The next theory, ha theory we have is the murder-suicide theory. So, it is said that, um, Sherilyn and Bobby had a super rocky relationship. They both suffered with depression, and Bobby got into a car accident a while ago, and it caused him to have this chronic pain that he couldn't really, you know, get rid of. So he couldn't do too much stuff like around the house, like all the handiwork, you know, yard work, stuff like that. And so people are saying like she got, you know, fed up with it and she, um, you know, they were just in this rocky situation with each other at the moment. Um, she was also bipolar, but she was taking medicine for it, but she would stop every once in a while because um, a lot of people with, you know, bipolar and bipolar depression will take their medicine until they feel good and then they convince herself that they're good and they don't need the medicine anymore. Um, so they speculate that Sherilyn had killed, shot Bobby in the head, explaining the whole, killed Madison and then killed herself. Um, but there was no gun found anywhere, but they also um, didn't find the gun that her friends and family say she kept in her car. She kept a 22 caliber gun in her car, but they never recovered that gun anywhere, but they also didn't recover it at the site either. So, you know, it could have been blown away. It could have been buried somewhere, you know, um, just by natural elements because it did take them quite a while to even find the bodies so it easily could have been you know like erode over or somebody found the gun and took it and didn't see even see the bodies or something you never really know you know especially out in like this wooded area so another thing that leads them to think it was a murder suicide and Sherilyn had killed her husband and her daughter was they found an 11 page hate letter to Bobby from Sherilyn in the truck explaining how she hated him and she wanted a divorce and she was not happy in their relationship and stuff and so they kind of you know were a little iffy on that situation but like I said Sherilyn is dead so they can't really go ask her about any of this stuff because they all three of them are deceased. The next theory I'm not really convinced by just because there is really only one piece of like evidence to support it this is the f that this is the theory that they were on drugs uh, specifically meth like i had said bobby's mother set up these surveillance videos um 
after the whole restraining order thing and the day that they were going to the day that they were leaving there is a video of Bobby and Sherilyn packing the car up and I do have to say it is very odd they are in this people say trance like state of them walking past each other like this going from the car to the house from the car to the house bringing all their luggage very slowly and they aren't even acknowledging each other at all whatsoever um so people are looking at this like drugs and even um they got a um psychologist in to look at this video and he said it could be caused by drugs but it also could not you know have anything to do with drugs so it's kind of this 50 50 thing i really don't think so because if you think about it if they really were in this rocky relationship and she hated him and didn't want to be with him maybe they were just having a bad day with each other and they didn't want to even talk to each other or look at each other because i know like when you're mad at somebody the last thing that you want to do is communicate with them you know what i mean especially when both parties are mad at each other you don't even want to like engage with each other and that's kind of this whole video is them they're not even engaging they're just walking back and forth and stuff so i mean you don't know they could have had this big fight before they you know left and they just were you know calming down from all the anger and they didn't want to get you know heated in front of madison or whatever you i don't really think it was necessarily drugs that they were on but um there was a big drug problem specifically methamphetamine in oklahoma at this time so that's why they are saying that it would that it might have been um meth and that would explain um the money found in their car because they are also saying it could have been a drug deal gone wrong especially if they were on meth that it was a drug deal gone wrong but if you're gonna go make this big drug deal you can get a lot of drugs for thirty two thousand dollars i don't really think they would have brought their daughter and their dog like i don't i would have like brought the kid to like their mother's house and the dog at home to go make this big drug deal i don't really think that they would have brought their kid and their dog along to make a drug deal also they were going to visit property maybe they were going to put a down payment on this house that they if they loved it or whatever so that they had it so um you know it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense but a lot of people do believe that that video is caused by drugs and they are very skeptical about it the next theory is the border theory so a month before they went on this trip they had hired a handyman or a border to stay with them to um you know take care of things around the house and stuff because like i said bobby was in this accident so he had chronic pain and couldn't do a lot of stuff around the house so they hired this handyman to do yard work and stuff inside the house that Sherilyn couldn't do or was too busy to do because she was taking care of madison and working and stuff like that but this guy that they hired made Sherilyn and Madison super uncomfortable, especially when Bobby wasn't around. Sherilyn's friend had told the police that she told her that he, um, one day he came up to her and got face to face, like two inches from her face, and told her that she was a white suprem that he was a white supremacist and to stop talking about her Mexican Hispanic descent. And this made her completely uncomfortable and very scared because white supremacists are very, very scary. They are a very angry group of people. And so she got very threatened by this and she had taken Madison into the a completely other room. She had got her gun and she um, pointed it at him and told him that he needed to get out of her house right now. And as he was leaving, she fired a warning shot onto the floor towards his feet. And he did end up leaving after that. And that was like the last time that they had him, you know, around. So the FBI did look into this guy and um, once they found him and stuff, it, and he had a solid alibi though so he kind of just checked out and there was really nothing else on this guy but again the same thing with the whole mexican mafia thing he could have sent somebody else to do this knowing he had an alibi you know what i mean knowing he was going to be you know doing stuff around somewhere else he could have sent somebody else that the fbi doesn't know about so you don't really no. Alright, so the last theory I have for you guys is one that I believe 
relatively the most out of all of these this is that they just simply died of exposure so what they are saying is that Madison had just completely taken off running and they chased after her and ended up getting lost in these woods and ultimately just died of exposure um that would explain the you know everything left in their car in a hurry the dog in the car you know it being unlocked all their stuff in there that would explain that you know your daughter goes running into the woods and you both go after her you know um but they were 2.7 miles away from their truck which is a long way to run for a six-year-old not to be caught but if they had their backs turned and she just completely went running for a while before they turned around and noticed she was gone and you know could barely see her in the distance and started running you know what i mean she if she had a head start or something it could explain it that they at least went quite a while and then tried to find their way out and just continued walking in the wrong direction to get back or something which made them so far away before they ultimately just gave up and just died of exposure and you know um that is what i believe could have happened because like i said that would explain you know leaving everything in their car like your daughter went running you go running after her especially if she was running into the woods um, so, um, that's kind of the theory that I believe is Madison just kind of took off and before they even noticed that she took off, before they could grab her right away, she was already quite a while away from them and she just went running and she, they went running after her once they realized it and ultimately kept walking pretty much in circles around this, you know, area and got lost and passed away. The other theory of exposure is that they went on a hike in this area where they parked, but if you're going on a hike, why wouldn't you take your dog and your phone and your, you know, GPS to get out of there? Like, I don't know, that that one doesn't really make sense to me because if you were going to go on a walk, you'd want to take all your stuff with you. You wouldn't just leave it in this unlocked car where anybody could get at it. Like, yeah, that just that part doesn't make sense to me but some people do believe it um because i don't know they just some people do believe that and that is one of the theories but that is all the theories that i have for you guys um let me know what you guys think is like the most probable way for them to have you know ultimately passed passed away um the one thing also though that gets me with like the exposure thing is they were all laying face down in a complete line that just rubs me the wrong way like that sounds like a ritualistic kind of thing to you know lay them down next like one right after the other all of them face down like if they had fallen asleep in these woods don't you think they all would have been over you know cuddling together trying to stay warm type of stuff but they were just laid oddly to me but um let me know what you guys think happened if you have any other um theories or anything leave them down below for me and um let's talk about it in the comments you know what you guys think about it don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let me know what you guys want to see next down below don't forget to follow my social medias they're all linked down below as well i post on mondays and thursdays at 1 30 central time and i will see you guys in my next video <laughs> bye